Hi Anno, welcome back everyone to our reading of The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe and at the end of um, chapter 6 part 1 we got to the part where all four of the children had gone to see Mr Tumnus and found that his cave had been broken into and they found a note um, that had been nailed to the floor and the note says the former occupant of these premises, the fawn Tumnus, is under arrest and awaiting his trial on the charge of high treason against her Imperial Majesty Jadis, Queen of Narnia, Chantelier of Car Paraval, Empress of the Lone Islands, etc. Also of comforting her said Majesty's enemies, harbouring spies and fraternising with humans. Signed, Morgrim. Captain of the Secret Police. Long live the Queen. The children stared at each other. I don't know that I'm going to like this place after all, said Susan. Who is this Queen, Lou, said Peter. Do you know anything about her? She isn't a real Queen at all, answered Lucy. She's a horrible witch, the White Witch. Everyone, all the wood people hate her. She's made an enchantment over the whole country so that there's always winter here and never Christmas. I, I wonder if there's any point in going on, said Susan. I mean, it doesn't seem particularly safe here, and it looks as if it won't be much fun either. And it's getting colder every minute, and we've bought nothing to eat. What about just going home? Oh, but we can't, we can't, said Lucy suddenly. Don't you see? We can't just go home, not after this. It's all on my account that the poor fawn has got into this trouble. He hid me from the witch and showed me the way back. That's what it means to be comforting the queen's enemies and fraternising with humans. We simply must try to rescue him. A lot we could do, said Edmund, when we haven't even got anything to eat. Shut up, you, said Peter, who was still very angry with Edmund. What do you think, Susan? Oh, I have a horrid feeling. That Lucy is right, said Susan. I don't want to go a step further, and I'd wish we'd never come. But I think we must try to do something for Mr. whatever his name is. I mean, the fawn. That's what I feel too, said Peter. I'm worried about having no food with us. I'd vote for going back and getting something from the larder, only there doesn't seem to be any certainty of getting into this country again once we've got out of it. I think we'll have to go on. So do I, said both the girls. If only we knew where the poor chap was in prison, said Peter. They were all still wondering what to do next when Lucy said, Look, there's a robin with such a red breast. It's the first bird I've seen here. I say, I wonder, can birds talk in Narnia? It almost looks as if it wanted to say something to us. Then she turned to the robin and said, Please can you tell us where Tumnus the fawn has been taken to? As she said this, she took a step towards the bird. It at once flew away, but only as far as the next tree. There it perched and looked at them very hard, as if it understood all they had been saying. Almost without noticing they had done so, the four children went a step or two nearer to it. At this, the robin flew again to the next tree and once more looked at them very hard. You couldn't have found a robin with a redder chest or a brighter eye. Here's a picture of the robin that's going from tree to tree, inviting them to follow them. Do you know, said Lucy, I really believe he means us to follow him. I have an idea he does, said Susan. What do you think, Peter? Well, we might as well try it, answered Peter. The robin appeared to understand the matter thoroughly. It kept going from tree to tree, always a few yards ahead of them, but always so near that they could easily follow it. In this way, it led them on, slowly downhill. Whenever the, robin, whenever the robin alighted, a little shower of snow would fall off the branch. Presently, the clouds parted overhead, and the winter sun came out, and the snow all around them grew dazzling and bright. They had been travelling in this way for about half an hour, with the two girls in front, when Edmund said to Peter, If you're not too high and mighty to talk to me, I've something to say which you'd better listen to. What is it? asked Peter. Hush! Not so loud, said Edmund. There's no good frightening the girls. But have you realised what we're doing? What? said Peter, lowering his voice. 
We're following a guide we know nothing about. How do you know which side that bird is on? Why, shouldn't it be leading us into a trap? That's a nasty idea. Still, a robin, you know. They're good birds in all the stories I've ever read. I'm sure a robin wouldn't be on the wrong side. If it comes to that, which is the right side? How do we know that the fawns are on the right and the queen, yes, I know we've been told she's a witch, is in the wrong? We don't really know anything about either. The fawn saved Lucy. He said he did, but how do we know? And there's another thing too. Has anyone the least idea of the way home from here? Great Scott, said Peter. I hadn't thought of that. No chance of dinner either, said Edmund.